Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hansen, and I am the Managing Director of the Texas Archive of the Moving Image. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our project, but also how it relates to family documents like home movies. Uh, please silence all your electronic devices. Just a reminder, no audio or video recording, uh, but photos are allowed. Our organization, the Texas Archive of the Moving Image, has been around now for 20 years, and um, we're celebrating that this year, uh, very exciting. We, in that 20 years, have digitized more than 40,000 moving images for thousands of Texans and hundreds of org partner organizations. Um, throughout the presentation, I may refer to us as Tammy, that's our shortened name, so if you hear me talking about Tammy, uh, I'm talking about the archive. Uh, so when we're talking about moving images of Texas, you might automatically go to something like Giant or the Alamo. But these are commercial products that have an infrastructure um, around them that, that cares for their preservation because they're still monetizing these. Um, so instead, what our organization is focused on are things like home movies, advertisements, local television, things that um, tend to not get taken care of, not necessarily because they don't have value, but because people don't know what to do with them and don't have the resources to digitize them. A home movie collection, the digitization of one can cost you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars. So our organization um, set out to help people with this process while trying to discover new moving images of the state. Right here, you can see Thomas Freeman, who is an orator um, who taught in Houston, uh, Barbara Jordan, and we were lucky to be able to work on his home movie collection. Home movies capture the way people walked, their mannerisms. Um, they paint a more tangible portrait of both film subjects and the people that filmed them. And I love this transition from when you posed for a picture, you would smile, but in a home movie, uh, you'd wave to the camera. And then when we get to the era of uh, videotaped home movies, VHS, people could actually say hello. We have a great exhibit on Google Arts and Culture that looks at home movies in our collection and trends in that collection. Um, as you can see, these are some of the things that home movies show us and some of the things we've seen over the years of collecting them. Uh, we see a lot of life events, community events, weather. In Texas, people ran outside with a home movie uh, camera whenever it snowed. Pets, nature, um, and travel. And a lot of uh, the Texas home movie collections we've worked on not only show Texas, but give us insight into what the world like, looked like at various times. We have 1920s home movie footage of Paris from a Texas collection. So um, these, they can show all kinds of, all kinds of things, uh, expected and unexpected. Rick Pralinger, um, who is um, affiliated with Internet Archive um, and shares his contact there, and one of the largest collectors of home movies, um, has a great list of reasons why home movies are important. Um, here's a few of them, personal expression, not corporate expression, Cameras were everywhere. Right here, we're seeing Amelia Earhart arriving in Dallas uh, from a home movie collection. Um, I encourage you to look for this list and I've, I put it in the chat if you wanna reference it, but it's a, it's a great way to think about how home movies might share more information than you are kind of thinking of when you're thinking of them as family collections. So our main program we do in partnership with the Texas Film Commission is called the Texas Film Roundup. Um, it's open to any Texas related films or videotapes um, we also accept digital files, and it's open to Texans, but also people who are not in Texas that have materials like this. We will digitize up to 50 small reels of film or up to, and or up to 10 videotapes for free in this program. The materials must be Texas related or thought to be Texas related. Again, we are willing to take, you know, kind of take that journey with you when you don't know what your materials contain. Uh, the participants receive digital copies and the original films and videos back, which is how we partner with a lot of libraries and archives. Um, and you can do whatever you want, like with those. You can share them with family and friends. In fact, we encourage you because we think lots of copies of these materials keep things safe. Um, and then we retain a digital copy and from that curate a collection online at texasarchive.org. The average home movie collection will try to find one to two things that we think maybe show a different part of Texas that's not already represented or a different era or a different type of tradition that we incorporate into the website after the project is, is complete. Uh, for this project so far, we've digitized 40,000 plus films and videos, 6,000 of those are on the website. And that delay has to do with the fact that we're doing research and curating and describing and making sure these things can be found once they're on the site. So that process actually takes quite a bit of time um, we have 18 educational exhibits exploring Texas topics that use these films and videos. 
We have 50 plus educator resources and we're constantly working with educators across the state to figure out new uses for Texas films and videos in the classroom. And uh, again, thousands of individuals, hundreds of institutions have worked with us. Um, TexasArchive.org, if you haven't been there, we've got a searchable and browsable collection of Texas video. Um, one of the largest home movies in the, in the world, I would say. Almost a million visitors a year. It's utilized by historians, researchers, educators, students, documentarians. We have um, one home movie collection, the Wanda Bell collection that showed up in a couple Ken Burns documentaries, which is pretty cool. And um, it's slated to show up in a new Willie Nelson documentary. And uh, the general public, you know, people, people find this for a variety of different ways and come to us in different ways. Uh, materials that we share via social media um, have earned more than 50 million additional views per year. The moving images you see in this presentation are, are GIFs. And we have a really active Giphy channel. And, um, you know, we think this can be really fun as well as being educational. Uh, one of the great, I think a great example of what we do and how this all comes together are our exhibits. Our newest one is called Meet Me in San Antonio, Hemisphere 68 on film. And this came out of us collecting and working with people to digitize home movies and realizing that we had home movies from across the state and from collections across the state that documented the hemisphere. Um, and there, more than 6 million visitors came to that. And it was something that I think people from across Texas traveled to. So we've been able to mix that together with news footage that we've gotten from um, broadcasters from San Antonio, as well as films and videos made by Hemisphere to create a map, um, an interactive map of the Hemisphere grounds so you can see what it looked like during 1968 and what was happening. Um, I love how home movies can come together with these other types of media to tell the story. Um, so we're going to be in San Antonio, if you're from there, on March 23rd at Hemisphere, screening films and videos from this uh, project. We're also going to be hosting a drop-off for the free digitization program, uh, the Texas Film Roundup. And um, if you can't make it out to San Antonio, though, uh, you can also mail materials in. You can see that information at texasarchive.org slash round dash up. That's where you can register, mail your materials in, or drop them off uh, in San Antonio at the screening. Uh, those are my kind of main points for today. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. This is my information. And um, I'm, I'm gonna be here for several more minutes to, to answer questions. Um, one thing I didn't go into is like how to store your films and videos or what to do with your digital files. If you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer those too. Um, or any other types of media or questions you have about archival media. Thanks so much for joining me.